What do we mean by variadic? Well, very simply, a variadic function is a function that is able to take X amount of inputs. How does it work? Uh, we know that every function has to be precisely defined, right? The prototype is clearly defining to the compiler, A, hey, this function is gonna take two inputs and the inputs are gonna be a char and an int. And the compiler needs to know this stuff, right? So how variadic functions like printf work? I can give as many inputs as I want, right, to this function, amazing. So today we're gonna decipher this little riddle. First new concept, we have another file that is called a standard argument. This file contains stuff that allows us to use these variadic functions. So let's check together. We say man stdarg, right? As you can see, I stumble upon this file and you immediately read this variable argument lists. So a function may be called with a varying number of arguments of varying types, like the printf. They include stdarg.h declares a type va list, a special object, which is of type va list, and define three macros for stepping through a list of arguments whose number and types are not known to the call function, okay? So this file contains a, a data type, a specific data type, which is called va list and three macros for working with variadic functions. So you can come here, read a little more, but I repeat to you, I'm practice based, so we're gonna do practice. So my friend, we're gonna create together a little function which is variadic, a very, 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 very simple one. So we do CD desktop and we say vim variadic.c, okay? All right, we have to include, of course, the standard argument dot h. So we have access to all the good stuff to handle variadic functions. Then of course, we're gonna include our standard input output to check what we are doing. And we start, we declare our main function. So int main, and here I want to check the average age of um, X number of people. So I declare int average age, okay? Average age is gonna be average, which is a function that now we're gonna declare. And this is a variadic function. Let's say I have uh, 10 people, so I'm gonna do 10. No, 10 is too much. Let's do five, so this is shorter. I'm gonna do 18, 45, 32, 100 years old, and um, seven. Okay, and then at the end I do my printf, um, the average age of those five people is percent D. All right, in here, new line. And here I put average age, okay? So of course now we have to implement the average function. So let's do that. The average function is returning me back an integer, right? I want an integer here, right? Average age is an integer. So the function is returning me back an integer. Here's the name. And as an input, what do I have? I have an integer that I call uh, i or I can call n, maybe, it's better. Then I have a comma for the second argument and the second argument is the special one. It is the ellipses, three dots. So with these three dots, I'm telling to the compiler, hey dude, I really don't know how many arguments are gonna be there. Indeed, we know how many ones are there, but you will see very soon. Here, I need to exploit the standard argument header file. Inside I can find uh, a special object that contains uh, all the good stuff to retrieve all the arguments given to the average function. So I have to declare a pointer to this struct, to this, to this object that contains all the, the good stuff. So I have to say VA list. So I declare an object, VA list is a new type and the name is gonna be AP. AP stands for argument pointer. It is a standard. Usually when we declare um, an object, uh, VA list uh, as the name AP, okay? So you will stumble very often inside this um, nomenclature of this object. Cool. This AP is pointing to the first argument, which is N, okay? Now we do something. We do VA start. Okay, VS start is a macro which is inside the standard argument header. And as an input I give AP, argument pointer, and the first argument, which is N. What is happening here? Basically, we are shifting one position my argument pointer. I want to skip the N. 
because the N is not a normal argument. N indeed is a signaling argument, if you want. With this N, I want to say how many arguments are gonna be there. You see here, I have written five. This five is gonna signal to the called function average that I have five arguments. So it is responsibility of the caller to explicitly state how many arguments are gonna be there, okay? So this five, if you want, is a flag. This five is a flag, quote unquote flag, right? And all of these are the actual arguments. Here on the average function, when I say VA list AP, I have a pointer that is pointing to the five, right? To the first one. And here I just say, okay, given that pointer and given that N is the first one, I want to go on the next one. So here I really have all the arguments, all the meat that I want to process in this variadic function. So I want the average, right? So what do I do? Here I say int total. So I'm gonna sum all the numbers here, even though I should have used the float, but that's not important. And here I put total equal zero. I recall to you that you always have to assign the, a value to a variable, otherwise you're gonna have um, junk value. Okay, then what do I do? Then I need uh, an iterator that I call i, like always. And of course, also the iterator has the value zero. Then I do a while loop while i is minor than n, i minor than five. So for five times, what do you do? Ask open, you do total plus equal, plus equal to what? I want to retrieve every argument, right? I want to retrieve inside the argument array, one argument I want to take, then I want to take the other one, then the other one, then the other one. So we have a special macro, which is VA arg, okay? I have to give argument pointer, and then the type I want to retrieve. Of course, here I have all integers, so I'm gonna do int. Then of course, I'm going to increase i, plus plus i. So for five times, you just retrieve, you just fetch the next argument that is gonna be an integer and you sum to the total. That's what happens. Then what do you do? You just uh, return total divided by n, okay? For the number of people, semicolon. Then here maybe we can do better to make a float, okay? So we're gonna return a float. Here I just type cast total to be a float. So this is gonna become a float division and not an integer division. And here at the bottom, I have to change this D to F. And of course, I'm gonna change this one to a float. Okay, this is all the program in all its glory. Let's try to launch and check eventual bugs. ZZ. So let's compile variadic.c and then let's launch. So you see, the average age of those five people is 40.40. .40. I think it is correct, but to be <laughs> super sure, let's do something different. This time I want to do the average of three people, so it's gonna be easier to count. And I do 10, 15, and 20, okay? So in this way, we are gonna um, see very well the average without, without wasting too much mental power to do the math. And you can appreciate that I can change very easily the amount of arguments, just changing the flag value, you see? ZZ, compile and launch. So of course, the average age of those five people, and this is wrong again, I have to change the printf because now we have three people. So here I change r3zz, compile and launch. Now this is correct, right? The average age of those three people is 15, which is correct. So my friend, this is a very silly um, blueprint initialization to a variadic function. As you can see, this is a function that is able to take x amount of inputs, now it's gonna be three, but here I can put whichever number I want, and the function is gonna change accordingly. Here you understand that you need a special object to loop into the arguments. Here you have a special function that is gonna start this um, process. This is gonna move the argument pointer to the right position, and this varg is a function to fetch the next argument. Of course, you are gonna understand better these ideas. This is just if you want breaking the ice <laughs> with these um, variety functions. So you saw how I used VA start, VA arg, and VA end I haven't used, but it's not really crucial. I would 
only focus initially to this VA start and VA arg. VA start is going to initialize um, the vector. Indeed, VA stands for vector argument. Indeed, I found online uh, in some blogs that it means variable arguments, but that's not the point. The naming is not important. The idea, the principle is what is really important. So if it is vector argument or if it is a variable argument, <laughs> who cares? Vector is just um, a fancy synonym uh, for uh, array, okay? Even though a vector is something which is more appropriate for C++. So this function VA start is going to initialize everything and VARG is going to fetch the next argument. Here you have something more visual. Here you have the average function that uh, is uh, specular to the one that I used previously. As you can see at the top, I declared this argument pointer, which is a pointer pointing to the first argument, which is num in this case. Num is that flag variable that is going to tell me how many arguments are there. Then I say VA start. As you can see now, argument pointer after VA start is pointing to the second argument, right? The one after the num, the flag argument. Okay, now we start. I want to start from the first real argument. So you can recall very easily, VA start, vector argument, variable argument, start. So let's start from the real argument, okay? That's the point. And then VA arg is gonna fetch the next argument every time. So you have to tell, okay, from the pointer to the arguments, retrieve an integer. So every time he's gonna say, okay, I have to retrieve an integer. That's what is going on. And then the end is gonna just clean everything up uh, if there is something which is uh, malloced by these objects uh, found inside a standard argument, uh, etc. okay? So you understand that num, the variable num is crucial, otherwise I don't know how many args are in the vector. Now, there are some details that we have to understand in my opinion. AP is a pointer. Hmm why we don't have the star? Why do we don't have the VA list star AP? VA list is a type defined in the standard argument header file. It is typically implemented as a pointer to a structure that holds information about the arguments passed to a function that uses a variable number of arguments. So why not the declaration with the star VA list star AP. When you declare a VA list variable, you don't need to use the star operator to indicate that it is a pointer because the VA list type is already defined as a pointer type. So we can simply write VA list AP. This creates a VA list variable named AP, which is a pointer to the structure that holds the variable argument list. You can then pass this variable to functions like VA start, VA arg, and VA end to access the individual arguments in the list. So AP is pointing to this specific object that contains all these magical stuff that allows me to loop inside the arguments. Now, I'm just gonna do something more visual so we can understand better what is going on. I'm gonna cat my variadic program, copy this, then I go to C tutor, and then I'm just gonna pass my little algorithm. And let's watch the execution together. So we start, we call our variadic function. What is going to happen? Boom. You see, this is the function frame that contains all this stuff. I declare my object, VA list, fancy structure that contains all these strange stuff, GP offset, FP offset, and other stuff that we don't really have to understand. Total zero, then we enter into our loop and VA arg every time is changing a value, which is here. GP offset. We go on, we go on, every time you're able to retrieve the next value thanks to the data which is inside this struct, okay? So my variety function is able to print the average, okay, which is 15. So this is what happens underneath the hood. You have a pointer to a fancy object, to a fancy struct, which is this one, VA list. Now, what is this GP offset and FP offset, members of the VA list structure? We can consider them like pointers that keep track of which register should be used to pass the next argument of a specific type, okay? So GP stands for general purpose and FP stands for floating point. <laughs> As you can see, this is very, very low level stuff. Indeed, when we pass arguments to the function, they can be uh, passed into the stack or they can be passed directly to the registers. And these registers are specialized. Basically, we have registers for uh, floating points or registers for um, integers, right? Like in this case. So this is very, 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 uh, very low stuff. Indeed, if we dig a little bit, we find that um, this VA starting is indeed a macro that is taking the place of um, some 
strange function. Basically, we have two underscores and built-in. Built-in stuff. What is this built-in stuff? Built-in functions are functions that are provided by the compiler. And they are very, very, very low level. They simply are used to very precisely move bits inside your computer. This is very, very low level stuff. Now, if I compile my program like that, GCC minus E, which is uh, simply a um, compilation till the preprocessing phase. So it's gonna perform only the preprocessing phase. Okay, now, as you can see, it's very shorter. And look my float average function as it's changing. Basically, we have text substitution. My VA start has become this built-in VA start, built-in VA arc, like in my slide, right? So basically we have these um, built-in functions, which are very, very low, and um, they work at the lowest level of, of uh, reality, my friend. You can do the same command here with H. This is gonna give all the other files that are used. Indeed, we are using this one. Now let's go inside this. So I do vim past. Let's watch what is inside this file. As you can see, I have my uh, standard argument file. I have my definitions. I have type def, built-in VA list, and then all my defines, you see? I define VA start, VA hand, VA arg. This is all low level stuff. And here, if you really want to understand what is going on, <laughs> you can do that. You can uh, go into the rabbit hole with ChatGPT and some forms and some forms online. You can understand really well what is going on with the arguments are they are passed and what is happening uh, with these functions. Okay, now we're gonna stop here, otherwise it's gonna become too, too tedious. You understand that we can create um, these variadic functions that can manage an amount of inputs thanks to this AP, which is a pointer to destruct, taking track of all the arguments, VA start, that is gonna allow me to start to the first real argument. And then thanks to VA arc, that is gonna fetch to me every argument. I have to tell very precisely to VA arc which data type is the next argument. So this uh, function is gonna be able to retrieve exactly that argument. And that's it, my friend.